We're live. All right, thank you for joining us again. This is actually part two. You want to watch part one of this. Blair, does that go back to last year? When the hell did we do that? Uh, I want to say it was March or April. This year? This year. Oh, wow. Right? All right. So was this pre-COVID or? Uh, I think this was right around COVID. Hmm. You know what? It was right, actually right, right before I remember because I was in my office. And then they quarantined us so we couldn't go in. <laughs> so this had to have been like early March, late February. I think us. that's right. Yeah. All right. So for those of you joining us, thank you. We're going to be going through a coaching session or a consulting session, as I like to call them. Uh, Blair's been an agent for over 20 years, Blair? 21. 21. All right. 21 years. And he's located in Phoenix, Arizona. He's a very successful agent. He's transitioned over the years and pivoted along the way to continue to grow. And so this year we met earlier this year and we kind of outlined his priorities and he's done a, a very, very good job over the last few months with that shift. And so I want to see where he's at. And then I'll, we want to kind of guide him together between Blair and I kind of guide him to see what's next and, and how he can improve. So we want to take you through that whole process and show you kind of his process so that you can apply it to yourselves as well. So Blair, thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate you being on again for a second time. Thanks for having me back, sir. All right. So tell me where you're at. Where Where's most of your business coming from right now? Because I'm going to be taking some notes. Okay. Uh, so I would say it didn't run the exact numbers, but I think I'm at 60% um, uh, buyers this year, 40% sellers or so. And, mm -hmm. and most of those buyers are from online lead sources uh, and then throw in some past client database referral kind of stuff. All right. So the majority of your business is coming from online leads? It is. Yes. Perfect. And what source on that online leads right now? Uh, so most of it is through a combination of Facebook as well as um, a partner that I have in the business that uh, generates his leads on the lending side. Okay, cool. And those Facebook leads, where are they getting produced from? Is your lender producing them? Are you producing them? Where are they coming from? Those are coming from me directly through Facebook lead ads. All right, dude. So you're running your own lead ads. Are you... What success are you having with them? So the ones, so when, when Facebook lead ads first came out, you guys, you, I think it was you that, that posted about it in lab coats. And then um, Juan Gabriel also had some stuff going on that you guys helped me with. And I did really well with them. And then it seemed like everyone started to do them. And then the contact information and the, you know, everyone doing them, especially here in Phoenix and across the country, just seemed like everything got really diluted, diluted. Yep. So it's harder to get better information. So I, I had a really hard time with Facebook ads and I, I thought they sucked, uh, but I continued with it. And then I found um, a place to advertise in uh, earlier this year that I've been doing it to, uh, meaning a specific area. So let's say San Francisco and right. getting those buyers or, or uh, contacts from San Francisco um, to bring into my database. So I've had very good success with it and um, trying to ramp up efforts to get more leads. Basically, as they come in, I'm, I'm a prospector, so I'm phone calling on the phones all the time, but implementing other systems to do some automation uh, was with a certain CRM provider out there. I've recently wow. switched. Um, to try to go more automated and just a different route. All right, cool. Let's talk about the systems and processes only so that I can see if I can find any holes to make it better for you. Okay. Since, since Facebook lead ads or online leads are your number one source, I always say, let's start with your strengths, right? Which is what we did last time. Let's go with your strengths, right? And then, and then we'll go into what's next. So for me, it's the same. I'm at 66% of all of our closings come from online leads. And then for us right after, it's referrals from our sphere and past clients. So very similar to yours, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, so with online leads, what we've noticed over the last few months is you're right, everybody's going in on the Facebook one. So what we've done is we've pivoted a little bit. We're still doing a little bit of Facebook. It still works, right? 
but what we're doing is also bringing in leads from Google PPC. Have you tried Google PPC yet or not yet? I the did with, yeah, tried them with the uh, recent provider that I was with and huh? just didn't, didn't experience much success. So uh, I've seen a couple posts about a website out there that I'm uh, just purchased last night that I'm looking to uh, try with that. So that's with um, the Carrot website. Oh, Carrot. All right, cool. Yeah, Carrot's going to help you and provide. Okay, got it. That was from the post that I did with with uh, in Follow Up Boss, right? All right. That's correct. So then let's go a little bit deeper because I want to understand your process. And I want to understand it for those of you joining in. Uh, I've been running online leads for a very long time. So I had forgotten actually, buddy, that, that most of your business is coming from online. So I get excited. All right. But I'm going to share with you a, a screen just to see where you're at with all of this. Um, and don't mind the noise in the background. It's me printing out a document that I need for you. All right. So here we go. You've got Facebook buyer leads coming through, right? Can you see my screen, Blair, or no? Yes. All right, cool. So tell me what happens next. Uh, are what type of questions are they filling out? Since you're cre you've the, you're the one creating these leads, do you have them answering questions? So I saw your post about that, and I I mean I think I ask several questions, but there's really no spot to answer them. It's basically just to you know that's my headline or uh, uh, in, in try to get them engaged to be interested, and then filling out the form or taking the next steps. Okay, so right now, do you have any questions at all besides give me your name and number and email? In in that, in so, so yeah, so, so the actual ad will have the questions, but then the, well, okay, yeah, so I guess the lead ad does have name, number, email. Yeah, besides that, nothing else, right? Correct, but okay. I saw your post and I'll be changing that. Okay, good. Um, so you definitely need to do that. Now, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing this to talk to you because what happens is as you're processing these, we can get, dude, we can get as low as like, I, I've gotten as low as like 50 cents, 65 cents in, in certain areas of the United States. And then, you know, we go up a little bit and they're like $2, $3. But what we've noticed over the last, specifically over through COVID is that the, the moment that we start adding questions like, and for those of you that are wondering what the hell I'm talking about, I'll show you shortly uh, because Blair is going to add it and it's going to make a massive difference to the lead quality. It's the moment that we started adding questions like, are you looking to buy in the next 90 days? Because it's already within Facebook. Are you looking to buy in the next 90 days? Yes or no? Simple question. Are you currently working with a real estate agent? Yes or no? Right? And the last one is, do you need to sell before you purchase, right? That automatically tells me if you're a seller or not. And if you look at the psychology of buyers and sellers, let's take a look at sellers, for instance, because people always ask Blair, they always ask me, well, I want seller leads, right? I'm like, well, think about what a seller does first. A seller goes and checks to see if homes are available where they want to move, right? Right. And it's early, early, early on in the process. And that's how we capture them on Facebook and Google, right? This is why we ask, are you looking, do you need to sell before you buy the next home? And typically when they answer yes, we already have that information. It processes through follow-up boss and then we get that. And then we go to the next one. So those would be the three questions, Blair. And since you, you said you're creating the Facebook lead ads yourself? Correct, yes. All right, cool. And are you dumping them? Are they dumping into Follow Up Boss? Or are they dumping into Sierra? Where are they dumping into? Just so people understand what you're using. So, at, at this present time, yes, they're going um, directly into Sierra. Uh, they remain there as a new lead, and then I'm uh, calling them. Once I call them, then they get put on a drip of uh, texts, emails. Uh, voice drops, and then I continue to call them. All right. So right here where I have follow-up boss, you have Sierra, right? Perfect. So yours is Sierra. And then you would go over here. Tell me about this process right here. You said you were telling me 
are you giving them a call or are you just laying low and just texting them? What does this look like? You're the agent right here. Uh, so I see a typo, by the way, Tristan. I know, damn it. Somebody told me two days ago. Um. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know what? I suck at some things, okay? That's, that's what, uh, don't say that. You don't suck at anything. Thanks, Brad. Um, so I, I, I try my best to call immediately. So if I'm on my computer, on my phone, lead comes in, I try within literally seconds to call them. Okay, cool. So if you don't reach them, what happens? Tell me. If I don't reach them, uh, then immediately in Sierra, I'm putting them, I'm, I'm changing status, tags, and then I'm adding a plan. So that plan will then consist of texts, emails, voice, uh, Actually, no, it doesn't get voice drops, just text and emails. Okay, good. And you know what? Just just so you know, voice drops, they're not really high on our priority. It doesn't usually make a massive difference. <laughs> uh, the biggest one is always the texting, right? Yep. That, that's what does it. So uh, tell me, this is just on the first day? Uh, so I, I don't even know what the... So the system, so it's Sierra, but then I've, I've uh, also purchased the... Uh, um, Eric catch add-on with uh, Robbie T's program. Cool. And I, I, I don't know, I don't remember. So, so they get texts and emails, but I, I don't remember the frequency, you know, like I think a text goes out, no response, maybe a another text in five minutes, an email in seven minutes, next day, another text in Giphy or GIF or whatever you guys call it that aren't boomers. <laughs> um, and then all this other stuff. I, I don't remember the sequence though. All right, cool. And so that would be, so that, that hatch process would be over here. What I have is agent legend automation, which is yep. perfect. All right. So now are you doing any dynamic ads for retargeting or not yet? Uh, so I was with my previous website. I mean, I can share who it is, but don't know that that's appropriate or not. Um, so it was with Ylopo. I was doing it with them, trying to figure out how to now do it because I, I am totally clueless with that. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's kind of on the tougher side if you're doing it on your own. So I would look for something to supplement this, um, reach out to Sierra. I don't know if the guys there do this, but if they, if they do, that would be an add on that I would make because what happens if these two fail, right? Because they're longer term, this catches them and we'll bring them back in long term. I'm talking about super long term. Okay. Like two years, three years, uh, we've had a few old Zillow, Realtor.com, Google, Facebook leads that have come back to life just from uh, dynamic ads. So just put that on your background on top of the questionnaire, right? So these two things are the things that are missing so far. So tell me now, once once they say, once you get a hold of them, Blair, and they say, okay, Blair, you know what? We're looking probably six months from now or or eight months from now. What happens then? What's that process for you? So just like, uh, so with Hatch, they have all these different drips that are set up to basically follow up at whatever time you set it for. So if someone says eight months, I basically put it in for half. So four months, they are either going to get an automated plan or a, dis a different type of plan that has me calling them. So okay. let's say they're looking for next December, I'm gonna set up a plan for me to call them June 1st and then an automated plan for June 2nd. So if I don't reach them on June 1st, I don't have to worry about setting something else up. It automatically goes to them. Got it. All right. Perfect. And so tell me, how is your whole database doing then? Are they on the hatch process? Like, or do you have them on a, on a trying to bring them back from the dead automation? So database size is 15,000 around, give or take a little bit total. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I've only brought over around 2,000 of those, what I would consider the hotter type leads or, or uh, the ones that I've already contacted, let's say, at, at any stage. Nurture, you know, 10 years out or a day out. All of those have been brought over. The remaining ones have not been brought over yet. Um, the as as we all know, merging databases or bringing ones over is, is pretty difficult. So um, I wanted to get that first part out of the way first, and then um, going to work on the remaining part in a in a couple weeks, um, and then probably set them up on the dynamic ads also. 
All right, cool. So that's good. I, I like that. So then tell me what happens after you reach them and they say six months, six months passes and now you're there and they're ready. Tell me what, what that process looks like. Do you, do you have an agent that goes and shows them property? Do you do this? What does this look like to make sure that the conversion is there at a high level? So up until this point, it's, it's mostly always been me. I've, I've had a team that was structured differently. So had people that, was, that were always helping me, maybe with showings, most of the time it was me, maybe 80% of the time. Okay. Uh, but recently uh, have started a team, growing the team, and have people that will be there to either handle all of the showings or uh, most of them okay. um, or many of them um, and, and looking forward to that. So I can do more of what I'm best at and, and continue this and, and to try to build this out to be something more special. All right, cool. Uh, can you explain to me the dynamic of what your team looks like right now? So, so that I understand. Yeah. So recently hired a TC slash admin slash executive assistant okay. who handles uh, all the TC stuff uh, and, and anything else that she's able to do, including social media. Um, and then uh, at this point have three agents on the team. I don't designate between buyer and seller's agent. It's just strictly agents on the team. So okay. they're able to produce their own leads. I provide leads to them also. All right, uh, produce the own leads. Perfect. All right, so I, I feel comfortable with Facebook leaving that. Just add those two things, right? And that was the questions and dynamic ads, right? Once you finish that. Now let's transition over to your team and then we'll go into uh, past clients, your database and, um, and your mindset overall. So team, you've got three agents on the team and they can produce their own leads. They can bring in all of that. Can you, can you go over with me like the splits? How does that look? And uh, that first, go ahead with that. So two different splits. If the, if the agent procures their own deal, it's 60-40. Uh -huh. okay. uh, and then they pay all uh, office-related fees. So TC fee, um, uh, uh, per deal fee. And then um, if I, I, I'm sorry, if they procure a deal at 75-25, and then if okay. I give them a lead, it's 60-40. All right, 75-25, got it. All right, I like that. And then office fees on, on either transaction come out of their stuff. All right, perfect. And right now, what would you say, when did you really start going deeper with the team to bring on these three agents? When did that happen? Month ago. Okay, cool. So it's brand new. I like it. So then I, I want you, I'm glad I got you at the right time then, because one of the main reasons that teams don't succeed is... Uh, it's there's a few things number one is there's no there's no growth plan for team members that are really strong on the team and i learned this the hard way blair so the very first agent i i lost that was like a mega mega producer left my team and went on to produce a hundred million in volume right and was my direct competition but I, he's my friend right but i'm just telling you <laughs> There was no growth plan for me and I suffered because of it. And, and so the first thing you have to look at is, okay, what happens after somebody starts producing good? What's that next level look like? Have you thought of that or no? Uh, no, because I, I feel that in my experience, um, I, I only feel best coaching and mentoring and guiding people with up to production numbers that I've done. So going above that isn't the agent that I feel I can uh, offer much value to okay. uh, other than just being here to say, hey, what's up? And then how about this? So, um, I mean, I would love to have people like that around me, but I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm in a position to really help those people. All right, cool. That's a, you know, that's a, dude, that's why I love you, man. You know what? That was, that takes a lot to say, by the way. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, match your authenticity and tell you that I was there at one point as well. I felt like I just wasn't, I felt like I wasn't offering enough. Why would you stay with me if you're producing over a certain amount? And that's something we need to work on over the next 
year because I think you're already there, man. The value that you have, you underestimate because I know your experience, right? You have massive experience. So here's what you need to do. You're going to have to grow with this great team that you've got, but you already have to start planning for that growth. And here's one thing I learned the hard way. Like I said, it's that scalability because when my team member, the very first one that left, uh, that, that went on to produce massive amounts, he came to me and he said, I want to stay on your team. This is literally him coming. I want to stay on your team. What's the next step? What can we do together? Right. And, and so I said, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else I can offer you. Right. And so I was there, dude. And then after he left, I was like, you know what? I'm just not viewing this the right way. Right. So I'll tell you what I did. There's just one question for you. Steve says, when you were saying Sierra, were you referring to Sierra Interactive? Yeah. Perfect, Steve. Good answer, Blair. All right. So here's what I suggest. You need to start structuring what the team looks like as they're growing. And what I've done, I can only give you an example of what I've done to maintain my team growing at a high level is I've created team leaders. And so I have team members on my team that, that are, I call team leaders. There's right now I have six of them, right? But I started off with three and I started off with three because those were the three that have been with me for the longest time, right? Now those three have been with me for 11, 11 years and two for 12 years. Wow. So, um, this has allowed me to scale long-term, see, right? You don't usually talk to people that have team members that have been with them for 11 to 12 years, right? And so now this is what it looks like. And this is what's allowed me to scale. I have these team leaders that I put in place. All of a sudden their split goes a little bit higher, right? So where you're at, let's see, you're at 60, 40 on everything you bring in, right? For them, here it is. I might look at increasing that a little bit if they do become team leaders, but more importantly, Every person that they bring on to their team or that you bring on to their team, can, can you name me, can you name the three team members for me just so that I have them? Yeah. Uh, so Andrea, Andrea, uh -huh. Benny, B-E-N-I and uh -huh. Crystal. All right. Here's what it looks like. And this is just one way of doing it. All right. This is just to give you ideas. So let's say you pick Andrea and you're like, Andrea, you're doing amazing. Um, let's say a year from now, and she's she's done very well. She understands your system. She understands uh, who who she is, who you are, and the dynamic of the team, and she wants to help it grow. You're like, Andrew, you're doing amazing. Let's do this. Let's create a team leader position for you. And this is what it entails, Andrea. I need you to, to be the go-to person for these new team members that we bring on. They're going to have questions about contracts that sometimes um, they can't reach me for, or our broker can't be reached and they need quick answers, right? You seem to have the experience. Number one, uh, you understand our processes and systems, like all the leads that are coming through. You understand how to talk to them, how to convert them. Um, I just need you every other week to meet with your team for 30 minutes and go over the processes and systems, dialogue scripts, and just to motivate the team. Cause this is going to be like your team, right? We're going to have team meetings as a whole, but I want you to take on this team to, to be able to help it grow. And I'm going to do this for you. Everybody that's on the team, you get a 5% override off the top. Every single person on the team, as long as they keep on producing, you get, you get money, right? Your 5% come, your 5% come uh, first and then everybody else gets paid. So as long as they keep on producing and you're doing a good job and they remain on your team, we're doing pretty good. It's kind of like passive income. And so my goal is to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be the one that continues to pay for all of their, all of their leads coming through all of everything. Like I'm continuing to do right. And all you have to do is be the person that helps to leverage that. So that's how I've been able to grow it. And uh, Blair, my splits are a little different than yours, but um, that split works. What I would do is if I'm bringing in a team member inside of a team, I would probably have their splits a little different. Like when you get there, whether it's six months, eight months, a year, <laughs> I'd probably bring them in at about 50, 50 to start, right? Because if they're going on a team at that level, they're probably newer or veterans that have just struggled a little bit or just come a little bit back. 
So that's what I would look to do and redo the team structure. Do you have any, uh, you said, do you have an admin in place or no? I do. All right, cool. And so one of the things I'm gonna share with you is the structure that I'd like to see on your admin. What does she do right now? Do you have one admin? Um, is that all right now? Yes. Yep. All right. So she's like the go-to. She does every, or he does everything. He or she? It's a she and she does everything. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to share with you a document as well. And I'll send this over to you, okay? Got a just... question. I have a question for you. Shoot. So you talked about there like a growth plan. Um, yeah. This is probably all mindset for me. Yeah. Uh, in the past, anytime, not necessarily like a business plan, but anytime I would put something together, I guess it was a business plan for something in the future saying, you know, this year I made a hundred grand, next year I want to do 300 grand. It, and, and I started to map that out. It would seem like anytime that would happen, I would take a complete, um, I, I would go complete reversal. Um, not, not me sitting back saying, okay, I had this and this was great. And then everything will just come to me. I'm not that type of person, but it, it mm -hmm. seems like what, whenever I try to plan something like growth, things backfire on me. So, and it's not me going into it with a mindset like this won't work or whatever. It's full blown. This will work. I'm committed yeah. with all of your knowledge. Where am I going wrong? You're focusing on, on what everybody focuses on typically. And that's the, uh, this is what you're going to hear. Well, what's your KPI? What, right. Keep, what's your keep for, key performance indicator. And they always say it's money. And that's why I always say you're wrong because that you can't control how the economy is doing. Right. You can't control your mindset, Blair. But I think if you start focusing on OKRs, right. What are those, what are those things that are absolutely necessary to keep you growing it doesn't have to be financial because sometimes finances alter right but it has to be like what are the priorities of your business what are the priorities of you as a person and what are the priorities of your family and i think that's where we get lost because sometimes we go okay what's our kpis right and we don't realize that everything revolves around those three things right personal you Right. And when I say personal you, I mean spiritual, physical, mental, right? That's you. That's one. Second is family. What does that look like? Spouse, children, siblings, parents, grandparents, friends. That's family. And then the third is your business. But the thing is, we get lost with our business. We start saying, well, how much money did I make? Because that's what our world does, right? That's how we determine if we're doing absolutely amazing but what about all those other things you put into place, Blair? What about changing your CRM? What about tweaking this thing that I'm telling you with Facebook, adding questions, doing dynamic ads? What about increasing the opportunities on your team now so that they can scale in the future? What I'm telling you right now, you're planning for two, three, four years from now, right? And that's going to change month to month because our world moves so fast. Right. So I'm not looking to necessarily say, well, look, in a year from now, Blair, you're going to end up with more money. I want you to create a business out of this so that you can look back and say, well, awesome, dude. Thank you. I made it through this rough patch and I didn't do I didn't do 10 percent better. I stayed where I'm at. But man, the growth of our team, my mind, my family, we're all doing better. So how, how do those things, though, become like I'm used to the measurable goal to say, I want to earn 300 grand next year. So if I don't earn it, uh, then I've not met my goal. So with the three things you just mentioned, personal family business. So let's say I, you know, as I've mentioned to you, I want to buy a home in Flagstaff. So, okay. So that that's measurable, but the other stuff, how does that become measurable? Like I want to work out five times a week and the other yeah. stuff, how does that all work in? Well, that's where you start measuring the objectives and the key results, right? That's the, that's OKRs, objectives and key results. The, the problem is we've been measuring, we're, we measure money and that's how we determine our growth. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because there, to an extent, that is part of our growth financially. And so the way that you measure everything else, Blair, the way that we should be measuring everything else 
is how is your personal personal health mentally, spiritually, physically? Because if I'm not doing, here's a story that I heard um, Jay Papazan, when I was interviewing Jay Papazan from um, The One Thing, when that first came out, sat him down and said, hey man, so tell me about this one thing. Say, hey, hey, look, before we even go into that, you've got to take care of yourself. When you go into an airplane, the very first thing that the steward or stewardess says as you're lifting off is once that air mass pops out and you've got kids, it's like put it on yourself first and then put it on your kids. So take care of yourself first. And I think that's the part that doesn't allow us to grow because we're always worried about, we're bombarded left and right from everything else, right? So we're like, oh, I, I just got this. Oh, wait, wait a second. A client's calling me. Wait, oh, this thing's falling apart over here. And all that consumes your whole day. And you never get a chance to work on yourself, Blair. So when I'm telling you, 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 you have to look at what your objectives are and what are the key results from focusing on those objectives, I mean, let's break it down to the simplest form and say, what are your priorities? I would assume if you look personally, Blair, your objective for you personally is to probably get better at growing your mindset to be able to say, all right, you know what? There are a lot of opportunities here. What do I see? Where, where can I go and grow more? right? What does that look like for you? Does it mean reading more? Does it mean hanging around with higher quality people, right? Does that look, does that look like making yourself a better leader? What does that look like if you say, I want to become a better leader, right? Because our growth, our growth is only determined by our abilities and our knowledge, right? And if we're not always increasing our knowledge and our abilities, we're limiting ourselves, right? And so the moment, Blair, the moment I realized when that guy came up to me and he said, well, how can I grow on your team? And I'm like, you can't, right? I w went back and I'm like, after I lost him and he made a hundred million, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something wrong here, right? I needed to look it within and say, who do I need to be in order to accomplish this? And I hadn't been asking me the right questions, right? Because we're always going for numbers, numbers, numbers. Oh, tech, right? Leads, processes and systems. But sometimes those processes and systems are all on the wrong thing, mm -hmm. right? And so here's, here's where you need to go back. As you're growing your team, as you're tweaking Facebook, I think we need to look now, now that we're talking here deeper, we need to, one of these needs to focus on you. Like my priority if, if I'm looking at you is, what does that look like? Who do you want to be, Blair, six months from now? Like, what is that? What is a, a, a better version of yourself look like six months from now? And six months from now, what is that, May? What are we today, May 20, uh, December 22nd? What do you look like May 22nd? Personally, not business-wise, you personally, what does Blair six months from now look like? What would you love to look like? spiritually, physically, emotionally, what does that look like? I'd like to have a different shirt. <laughs> we, we can make that happen today. Awesome. Um, I don't know. That's, uh, I haven't thought about it because I've, I've been, everything has always been, I mean, I, I want to serve my clients and team and, you know, uh, uh, my fellow agents at the highest level, but I, I haven't, um, I, I haven't gone to the thought of like, what do I need to do? It's basically, I need to earn this. Every, everything has always been GCI driven. Right. I hate that. Because if I, if I earn this, then I'll be able to do this. Right. Um, so I, 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 I can't answer that right now. I don't know. All right. I'll help you. You're asking, you're almost asking the right question. Um, let's ask, who do you need to be in order to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish? Right. And I think you said you want to be a better leader to get your team to accomplish certain things. Right. What's that going to take? What does that look like? If you want to be a better leader, what are the qualities that you would say, I need to have these qualities or I need to know this in order to lead my team here?
and they can produce more. What does that look like? What was the first thing that comes to mind? I mean, one of the biggest areas that I've, I've had issues with is reading. Um, I don't make the time or find the time to read. Uh, you know, like this year, the goal was a book a month. And I think I've done two this year. Okay. Um, what books were they? Um, uh, I don't remember. All right. Goal was one book a month, right? That's actually a pretty reasonable goal. I think that the thing is that you probably didn't make the time for it because it's not a priority. Let's make mm -hmm. that a priority for you. All right. So what would reading do though? I want to understand like deeper. What do you think reading is going to do that's going to allow you to, to grow? So I think, I think um, where, where I grow from it most is that basically my, my life consists of real estate and my family. So if I'm not working, I'm with my family outside of that. Um, limited friendships because I'm more about quality than quantity. Um, cool. So I, I don't, I really don't like have any hobbies. So part of just the reading, the goal would be to just have some time to myself. What, what I learned from it is a totally separate subject. Um, and I'm guessing I would learn something from reading, but it would be just more about um, getting away from being attached to this 24 seven. Got it. All right. Uh, I love that. Did you and I, I didn't realize that you and I function in a very similar manner. That's cool. Well, of course we do. We're brothers. We, we got to be. We've got to be. Um, that's cool. So yes, I know where you're coming from then, Blair, because I, I function the same way in the sense that um, I have very limited friendships and my life does consist of real estate and family. That's it. And I primarily focus on family. But here's the thing. The moment that I realized that the quality of my business and the quality of my family life revolved around me because I'm responsible for where they both go. When I really realized that and like really deeply realized that, I realized that I wasn't doing enough. And I was like, shit. I, it hit me hard because it like, it was like a, a, a moment after I, I read after I read Extreme Ownership, I was like, holy crap. It's been, and it, he kept on driving the point over for me. Now that book was at the right moment for me, right? Different books are different moments for people. But I realized that if I want to change something, business, family, myself, it's up to me. And in order for me to be able to change any of those, I need to become a better version of myself. And for me, the first thing that came to mind is, well, I need to hang around better people because those, those people that I'm hanging with, they're good, but they're not great. They're not pulling me up. They're not pushing me up to be a better version of myself because they're not giving me the right examples, right? And then the other part is I wasn't taking time to grow my mind. Here's the thing. We have up to 70,000 thoughts in a day. That's insane, all right? Now, we have the reticular activating system that filters those and says, okay, well, here you go, Blair. We've got this, right? We let through for you. And we've got this we let through for you. The other ones, we're kind of holding back because we, we can't process that many thoughts, right? And so the thing is, the reticular, uh, reticular activating system decides what to filter based on your attention, based on who you're hanging out with, based on what it sees subliminally. If it sees more of it and it sees you paying attention to something more, it lets those things in. This is why we continually see the same car when we want to purchase it or after we purchase it. So what happens is as you start bringing in better quality people around you, whether it's just webinar, podcast, audio, books, your mind starts all of a sudden filtering these things out. And saying, hey, Blair, I noticed that you're focusing more on this. Check this out. It's been around before, but you never really paid attention to it. Right? Mm -hmm. And so this is where you're going to have to have some discipline and change some of these habits. Because I can probably look through your day and say, hey, Blair, at this moment right here, at the very beginning and at the evening, you've got some time to really dive deeper and make yourself better internally. Right? 
And that's where we're going to have to look. Here's where I would suggest um, you're either not reading the right books because they don't grab your attention, right? And um, you're probably, are you more of a reader or a listener? Um, reader. All right, cool. Me too. That's right. I forgot we're brothers. I could just tell you what you are then. <laughs> um, I'm a reader. And the thing that was, that was really holding me back was I didn't realize how important it was for me, Blair. I didn't realize how important making my mind stronger, making who I was internally stronger. I didn't realize that that was going to change those people around me to be better. And it literally has changed my family structure. It's changed my children. It's changed my wife. It's changed my business partners. And more importantly, the thing, the thing that most the most successful people in our world do differently. And remember this part, the one thing they do differently is that when they look at something that they wish they had or a place that they're not there yet, they say, whoa, whoa, wait a second. I'm not gonna rely on other people necessarily. I need to figure out how to get there. What do I need to do to get there? Who do I need to be to get there? And they go all in. You're at that moment right now. You've been over the last six to eight months, you've been in this transition moment, right? Because look, a team, that's crazy, man. I love that. But I think now is the time to increase your leadership skills on who you are. And that's going to take you focusing on you in order for those people around you to benefit from a better version of yourself. And that's going to take a lot of work on your part. It's not fucking easy, dude. I have, I wake up earlier than everybody else, right? And I go deeper than everybody else. I don't just read books. I study them. I take a lot of notes. I understand processes and systems. And I go, how does this apply to my business? And here's what you need to do. You need to stop reading shitty books that are not interested, that you're not interested in. And you need to topic stack. So for instance, you want to learn about one subject. Um, what would you love to increase your knowledge in overall? What would that look like? Your business, yourself, emotions, mindset, what? What does that look like? What are you interested in? Uh, I'd say mindset would probably be at the top. All right. So what you do is you Google the top five mindset books that have been ever created according to reviews, right? Okay. I, I would put Dick Carol Dweck's mindset book at the very top. Carol, Which one? Carol Dweck. Carol, hold on. Hear this one. So, so this one, Carol Dweck, mindset. Uh, this, one's, this one would be number one uh, because all the other ones that are written about mindset, re, uh, all that go back to her research, right? So that's number one. Then what you do is you find three or four other mindset books that are highly, highly, highly recommended. One of those I probably would put also Limitless, Limit, Limitless by uh, Jim Quick. Jim Quick, Quick's last name is K-W-I-K. So that, those would be two of the four, right? And then you start with this one, Blair. You start with this one. And you know, as you're reading it, this is what keeps you accountable. You're becoming a better version of yourself because as you do, your kids will change. As you do, your wife will change. As you do, your friendships and your business will change because you start seeing things differently. You start processing information differently and you just become a different person, right? And so that's where you need to start. But dude, you need to set time to do this. This, this is going to be working on yourself. A lot of people just fucking chill and watch Netflix and that's working on themselves. What is that doing? Hey, Queen's Gambit was a pretty good series. I mean, that was pretty good, actually. I liked it a lot. I liked so it a lot. I, I know that this is a consulting session from you to me. 
uh, I would like to share something on mindset, if I may. Mm -hmm. So as you said, our, our, our first call was around March. Um, I, I don't remember the exact date. Uh, and last night I pulled up my numbers just so I could speak to something. So anyone watching this, and, and you could hear about this, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so last year, 2019, I finished the year at 25 units and 7 million, which um, for, for some agents are, are great numbers, um, very much down in, in my own book. Usually it would be double than that, double that. And, and I don't speak, I'm not speaking that to make it sound like, oh, you know, 50 units and 14 million is uh, the best or whatever, just simply what I normally do. Yeah, so very, yeah, so very, very down year. Uh, from my numbers. This year went into it with, you know, whether it was 50 units and 16 million in production, whatever. Uh, in March, I, I wasn't having the greatest first quarter. Um, had n co COVID is not part of this discussion at, at all, because uh, I, I, I personally think COVID, it's affecting many people, but I think too many people are using it as an excuse. Yep. Um, so, uh, I, was, I was on a trip in Texas with my wife for our anniversary uh, in some uh, wine country because we like wine. And um, it was literally just as COVID was starting to hit the country on a very high level. NBA shutting, well, sporting events shutting down, blah, 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 blah. Um, on my phone, on vacation, because I always have my phone, I was digging really deep into the social media, not really spending that much time with my wife, looking at social media saying, okay, I've, I've not accomplished what I wanted to so far this year. Um, I'm here. I'm going to absorb all this crap about COVID. I'm going to get back. And I started to analyze what would happen when I got back just to like when I did when foreclosures started to hit in 2007 and eight, when I had a very successful uh, REO career. Um, uh, and I was like, I'm going to take that same approach mindset. I'm going to get back. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to do the things that I need to do, follow my schedule, do the activities so I can get to where I need to get. Mm -hmm. And I'm extremely happy to say and proud to say, uh, in, in addition to the many accomplishments that I've had this year, starting the team, having an awesome TC admin and team members, uh, removing one year of REO, this is by far, uh, in my opinion, the best year I've had from so many aspects, numbers, income, uh, change of goals. Uh, many of these things back on my vision board, which we talked about last time, yep. are starting to come to more fruition far sooner than I could have ever imagined. And it was only because mm -hmm. I made that flip of the switch that one day to say, I'm going to get back Monday morning and this is all my chance to shine. I know what to do. I know how to do it. And uh, I'm, I'm so proud of that moment. Yeah, I love that. So with that, most of your businesses come from online leads and referrals from past clients of Sphere, right? So let's tweak that and make it better, right? Facebook, for sure. Past clients we didn't even get into, which I'll probably call you separately on. But I think above all that, you mentioned something here, and I know you didn't you didn't do it on purpose. You mentioned the very first thing that that changed for you. You said was that you made more money, right? And that's cool because that's that's what drives everything that we want, right? Everything uh, everything that revolves around us, right? Our houses, our cars, our our food, everything. I'd like you to switch that eventually to say, Tristan, I became a better version of myself, right? I became a better father. I became a better leader, a better husband, right? That's what I want you to lead with because too often we lead with, oh, I made this much money last year. Dude, do you ever see real estate agents on social say, hey, this year was amazing. I became a better father. I became a better leader. I became a better husband or spouse? No, we focus all around money. So this, if you take one thing from this man, yeah, tweak Facebook for sure. Um, and add there, add dynamic ads. But I think you're at a point where if you start working on yourself more this next year, because it's another amazing year for real estate, you're going to be able to 
set yourself right for the next few years because you're going to be working on yourself. It's, it's going to be a lot easier for us to make money this coming year in real estate because we're, we're already in the business. So it's a lot easier, right? So I think take time to set this time a day, one hour a day to be reading. And then when I say reading, everything that you're reading, apply it to your business and to yourself directly. Say, what, what can I learn from this? What can I take home to the kids? What can I take home to, to my wife? What can I take personally to become a better leader from this? How am I changing, right? What do I want to be six months from now? And if you do that, what happens is you start changing who you are internally, and then everything else around you will change too. But it's a slow process, Blair. So don't get bored. Don't get fucking bored with this shit. So I need you to go all in and be like, I'm working on this for me. I'm working on this for my family, right? I'm working on this for everybody around me. That's what drives me, man. Because I know I've seen it work. And a lot of us focus on the money. And this is cool. Like, I love money too. I do, right? It buys everything I want. But if I don't focus on my kids, if I don't come home and play with my kids, if I don't take time to make my relationship with my wife better by actually spending quality time with her, mm -hmm. I'm going to lose everything that's the most important to me. Mm -hmm. Dude, it makes me so proud when I see my kids. Like I'm planning. I plan every day, every week, right? I go deeper on the weekends, but I'm chilling and I'm going through and I'm like, okay, because I've got this routine, right? The morning routine and the evening routine. I do this. And at night I'm like, and then my daughter looks up and she's like, oh, that's right. I have to do mine. And I'm like, that's right. Right. You lead by example. That's it. So if you're focused on money all the time, what, what is the example that you're setting for your kids and your spouse, right? That's cool. But I'm telling you, this, your mind is everything. Okay. So I need, I need to see some changes, man. I need to see morning. What's it going to be? Morning or evenings for you? Are you a morning person or are you an evening person? Yes. <laughs> you're evening or morning, damn it. Which one? I, I struggle with this because I'm up early in the morning, but uh, because of our situation, we have two dogs. If I get up then the dogs get up and then everyone else wakes up and there's not an easy way around it. So I'm, I'm yet to figure out how to solve that. And then evenings um, I'm up late, um, but then I'm working on some other stuff. So I, I, I'm, I'm both morning and evening, but I, I don't know how to solve, when to dedicate the time to read, work on myself, whatever. Okay, so you just need to process. Um, you need to identify those priorities. We've identified one of those, right? Priority number one, reading. It's probably going to go way deeper than that, but for now, we're, we're just keeping it as reading. Yep. And I think that the the process is you don't you don't really have a process for winding up, and you don't have a process for winding down, right? That's why it's it, that's why it seems like it's all over the place, right? And so in the morning, when you wake up, when, how about this? When you're ready to work, what does that look like? What do you do right before? You just get to the office or you get to, in some cases, your home office? Or what does that look like? Uh, <clears throat> show up at the office, <clears throat> open up the computer, log into the CRM, hit the dialer. Okay, cool. And what do you do prior to that? Uh, nothing. Okay, cool. Let's work on, I'm going to share one thing with you and then we'll, we'll call it a day, but dude, you and I probably need to talk again, like in two weeks. Okay. Or sooner, um, outside of this, just so I can help you. Um, I want you to start doing something like this. And I, I, so this is all, I created this the thing I shared with you last time, I think it was, it might have been. So I've um, made it better and better. So here's, I, I call uh, I call it mar uh, prepare to marvel because I usually start with the evening first, right? And I put acronyms. This guides me. Uh, I made a, a, a kid-friendly version for my kids, right? But this guides me so that I at least I'm hitting the things that I need to hit every morning. 
even if it's at a minimum, and I have a minimum here, italicize for 10 minutes because I know sometimes I'm way behind, right? And it's my own fault. So look, this at least you get the, the reading in, right? And then in the evening, it's getting all the right things in also. So I think we can slowly start with the even, e either the evening one or the morning one and identify which ones those are. I don't expect you to fill out those questions. I just want you to do the morning part first, this. Okay. Right? That's it. And I don't know if you meditate. I don't know if you pray, right? I do both, so it doesn't matter. Uh, affirmations, record your previous day, visualize. This is important because it kind of identifies what your priorities are for the next six months. I'll go through that with you. Okay. And then exercise and then learn, read, or listen. All right. So I think that'll help guide you for what we want to help you become, which is just a better version of, of you. Right. That's all. Okay. So this went different than what I thought it was going to go with Blair, but <laughs> that's the I impact I have on people, Tristan. I think it's good though, man. I think you were super authentic with me so I could really see what we need to do. And this is where you're at right now. This is exactly where you're at, which is beautiful. So we can at least level you up from here. Awesome. You're in a perfect place, man. You're in a perfect place for extreme, extreme growth. So I love that. I love the idea of making more money. I love that. All right, Blair, then I'm going to text you as soon as I finish this next webinar. All and right. then just you and me will jump on probably like, if you want, we can jump on next week. So that at least you and I can go over this process. Yeah. And then, and then we could just go from there. At least you can start off January super strong. Cool. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, bro. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Have a good one.